Okay. Let us go ahead and get ourselves started again. I know a lot of people have some individual questions about the assignment, but if you do, you know, please come back and let's try and take care of it in office hours. Please don't try and like interrupt class and pull the TAs away in the middle of class because it's distracting for some of the other people who have already finished up the assignment and they're ready to move on to the new material. So please go ahead and like let's focus on what we're doing here today and we'll try to have some side, yeah, we have, do have some time set aside this evening to kind of keep on dealing with stuff and answering some questions. A lot of people I think are pretty far along in terms of the assignment. Are there any general questions about what sort of do for the assignment? Not specifically, I'm having this problem with my pipe and how to get the toilet hooked up, but some general things about like what's ready or what, what, what's uh, expected or due? Like, yes? Do you have to show the HVAC as we connected somewhere after the room? No. No, so just go ahead and run the ducting. You don't need to actually put in the air handler unit. It's actually pretty complicated to put in an air handler unit and get all the ducting in the piping merged in right, and then you get to decide whether it's a rooftop unit or whether it's a floor by floor unit, and you can have a whole quarter on just HVAC design. So don't worry about that. Just as long as you got the ducting going somewhere, you're in good shape. Okay, just take them over by the elevator somewhere, because that's sort of the idea where that air handler would be. But if you've already put it in there, super. Don't go ahead and take it out. But you don't need to put it in there if it's not in there already. Okay? So um, other random stuff about the plumbing. You know, it's pretty much do everything on this is that one floor on the second floor for the plumbing for the HVAC. It's just the third floor on the east side. You don't need to kind of take it very far without that, outside of that. Generally, the ductwork, things I've seen, generally it's good to keep the ductwork inside the building as opposed to up on the roof. You could put it up on the roof and have a lot of penetrations through the roof, but then you have a lot of potential leakage. And you also have, uh, we'd have to sort of insulate all the ducts. So it's better to keep the ducts down under the roof and above the ceiling plane so it's kind of in that nice conditioned space so that you don't have a lot of energy loss there. Um, any other random things? It's, it, most people, I think, we're doing pretty good. We had a large group in here last night, and we're kind of knocking down a lot of the issues. And you know, most people seem to be having sort of very similar issues. The biggest thing we tend to run into, I think, that I've seen is really it's more just sort of fussing with the piping than anything like that. And the trick is it's just really, really finicky about there being enough space. So rather than trying to collapse, if, if you don't get one of these it can't auto route sort of things, it's most common message. Nine times out of 10, it's just that where you're trying to get the pipes and where you're trying to connect them to are too close to each other so that it doesn't think that it can make the right number of bends and elbows and twists. So try running another pipe just further away. And just as a general kind of tip with this stuff, it seems that, you know, as I played with it with a lot of different people's machines, uh, rather than trying to, if you've already, what, if you've run the main branch across and it's sort of too high and you're running into problems, Often it's easier just to take out that branch and the little connect two pipes and rerun the new branch as a whole and connect into that as opposed to trying to move all the different little individual pieces and segments because it seems like it really gets finicky when you start moving parts of one but you don't get the elbow and it comes up with these really weird configurations sometimes. So yeah, don't be afraid to say, you know, that branch just doesn't look good. Knock it out and put a new one in because it tends to go back in pretty quick the second time. Yes? No, for this one, there's no sheets. Just go ahead and give us back the files. Take the architectural model, the structural model, and the MEP model, put them in a folder, and just zip them up and submit that. And the reason we like all those together is that since you pointed to each other in those files, you know, if it's all in the same folder, when we open it, it'll still point to your files in the same set. So just put them together into a folder and zip that up. And the other one is on, like on the structural bracing. Yes. On the exterior wall, how do you want to, how could we go about doing that? Oh. The architectural wall kind of thing. No, it's, it, it, there is a conflict. In the, uh, inherently, what's going to happen is, yeah, you know, so d don't even sort of worry about that now. Basically, if this is your structure, okay, and it's going to go up all three floors, okay, on each of these different walls, you want one, one bay of bracing, something like that, and continue it all the way up to the top. And then on this side over here, the same sort of thing, one bay of bracing, continue it up to the top. And realize it, it is going to conflict. We have an awful lot of window in there. We really didn't leave you any space to put the bracing. So there's going to be some place where you're going to have bracing overlapping a window somewhere. Oh, yeah, that's OK, too. It just means there's got to be some sort of change to the architectural to accommodate your bracing. We've got to do something. Or let's just kind of even talk about that, because really, 
there's certain places that are good and not so bad. And I say there needs to be a discussion, but there are some things that are and aren't so good about doing this. Like, this is not a very good place to put the bracing right there, only because that's where the big front door is. The braces are going to sort of be sticking up in that big portal opening and stuff like that. So I'd probably avoid that one, unless you really want the braces to be an architectural feature and you're going to paint them and uplight them and kind of say that it's part of the architectural you know, ambiance of what you're creating. In terms of all of these, we could put these sort of like uh, K braces in. Some people are doing this. They're putting big diagonal braces like that, which sort of you know block off even a little bit more of the door. So I tend to like to do it this way, but either way will work. You know, it's just sort of a different sort of strategy about putting in the bracing. What would probably happen in this building along the front wall, just so you sort of know, is that for the front wall, if we really wanted to go ahead and preserve all that glass and we didn't really want to get into the bracing, we'd go for a different system, which would be called a moment frame. So what we'd actually do is we'd say that this whole portal right here is a really strong, rigid, welded frame. Okay, and we bring that all the way up to the three floors. And that would be a much more expensive piece of steel to go ahead and manufacture. But it would allow us to go ahead and not have to go through and block any of the glass. So that's just sort of another way we sort of deal with the structural. There's a lot of different ways to provide that lateral bracing or that lateral support. Well, the kind of the cheapest and what a lot of people do is do the, uh, the bracing. But if bracing is just not available architecturally, then you get into doing something like a moment frame, which is sort of a more expensive way to do it. But, you know, that's a trade-off you make to, to create the architectural effect. And even in what we're doing today in Revit structure, I'll show you how you would actually go through and create a moment frame because it's really just another way of sort of saying what these end connections are like. Any other generals? Does that, that take care of you? In terms of uh, the bracing? What's that? OK. <laughs> well, there, there's always more. <laughs> like, yes? Yes? No. Actually, it really, it, they just sort of are driven by pressure. So I'd put them at whatever height just sort of yeah, so that when you sneak them all in, the, you have the maze of pipes that they're not overlapping. So often what I've been doing is I just put the water pipes up pretty high. Since, since the, the drain pipe, I'll put that in first because that's the one that's really kind of hard to get the slope on. Then above that, I'll put the, oh, the cold water pipe at four feet and the, the hot water pipe. Actually, put the hot wa cold water pipe higher because you have to hit, hit the top of the urinal. Yeah. So, yeah, I put that at six feet and put the hot water at like five feet or something like that. And there's a slight difference in the efficiency because you're pumping water up a little bit higher, but that's not enough that it's really going to matter. But d don't be afraid to sort of spread them out. In fact, the reason, even as you look at the structure towards the back here, there's actually an interior wall and like a little inset from the back of the building. And that was really to create a whole cavity space where you could run all these pipes quite freely and not have to worry about what they look like architecturally. You know, because all the, the toilets and stuff are mounted to the front of this like wall. Okay, but there's this whole like cavity back there where everything's supposed to give you lots of room to go ahead and put whatever you need back in there. So so take advantage of that. Okay. Then have to get you going? Okay, let's go ahead and get it all finished up again. We'll have office hours after class this evening. And I don't know, I think but for the most part people are doing pretty good in terms of what's going on. The biggest thing I've seen is just finickiness about the piping or even about sort of the ductwork, trying to get it all together. And my general you know, advice there is when it, when it gets too fussy, knock out, take out what you did and try putting some more down because oftentimes it's easier just to run a new pipe with a bend the way you know it wants to be now as opposed to trying to adjust it after the fact. Oh, other random thing about HVAC, just so you know, since you have supply and return, yeah, if you want to have a system so that they can overlap each other, which would generally be more efficient than routing it all the way around the outside of the building, just think about that 10 to 12 foot space as having layers. Think about maybe 10 to 10 foot 9 being the supply duct space, and the 10 foot 9 to 11 foot 6 being the return duct space, or vice versa. But think about, as opposed to having tall, skinny ducts, have low, flat ducts, because that way they can actually pass over each other. And that's sort of the most common way we do it is we just sort of, we have them pass over and you get the efficiency of, because uh, you can really you know, lay it out so that the supply and the return are almost running right parallel to each other, just one right next to each other and slightly above, and have a very efficient layout. Now, don't worry. If you've already laid it out and you have some incredibly snaky design, we're not going to be evaluating you based on the efficiency of your design. 
and your MEP engineer would ultimately talk to you about that, but we're not going to talk to you about that. It's just go ahead and all I want you to do is get some duct work in there and get the heights about the way you want them. You know, and, and you know, if you have a snaky design, you know you have a snaky design. And you, you, know, you can imagine that you, what you would do to reroute it. And generally the solution is to go ahead and try and like uh, you know, layer it as opposed to like uh, routing it around. Because routing it around gets pretty hard to do. You know, and you get up with very long paths that aren't very efficient. Okay, enough of all that. 